Today on Blue Collar Adventures, we're going back to the Selway. And this year we're not hunting, we're fly fishing. Bart Johnson going to the Selway. We're here in Oro we, we got the license though, we're safe. What do you want to know? Uh, legal. Right in our boy field, teach us how to fish the rivers. Can't catch fish in 15 minutes, he's fired. A lot like Abilene here, pretty. Well, this trip I got the Johnson boys. You see number six for TCU this year on the national team. That's him and his brother from Brownwood, Texas. We go out there and I've always wanted to take these guys fishing up here just because they're Texas boys. They've never been to the mountains and to go see big timber in the summertime is a great break for all of us. So we head to Orfino, Idaho to catch our bush plane in. Cause it's the morning of the day And I need to be a working And there's nothing left to say Well if I don't bring the bread Then I guess it's shame on me Well I need to bring it home And that's the way it's got to be Cause I'm a hard working man A hard working man indeed You know, it's funny, we get over there to the runway and our pilot's a little bit bigger than all of us and he starts calling out our weights because when you fly into the backcountry like that, your weight has to be exactly, so you can't fib a whole lot. So we started weighing a little bit and of course we had to leave some stuff behind because we were going to be overweight if we didn't. We jump on the plane, it was kind of comical that we're cutting weight and the pilot was bigger than all of us. Here we are, small plane. On the way in, I can tell everybody's having a great time. I also got a boy from San Antonio named Phil Hooker who is an avid fly fisherman. So just to take these guys in and show them a new experience, that's why I came. Baby, keep that picture on your shelf. I'll take off a few days, use my vacation time. Wish they had to mold it for us at least. Mike Ritchie is the ultimate mountain man from Idaho. He's been doing this for two generations. He's as close to Jeremiah Johnson as you get. Oh man, that ride right there was worth the trip. <laughs> well, gone. time to do a little fishing. We'll bring in a pack string and we're gonna pack up river about five miles and we're gonna work the river on the way back down. And it's just one of those deals, experience for these Texas boys. They're, you know, they've been around horse a little bit, but they never rode the mountains. And we've got our fly rods in tow and we're headed up the mountain. That's a bad sign when you start doing that, Junior. Just don't flop your arms like a chicken when he runs. That really <laughs> bothers me on video. <laughs> I mean, you can catch a football running full speed. You, you can conquer that pony. Put your reel on the, you know, the right way, not like me. There's something about when you get in the mountains, you know, it's spiritual. It's more than just a fishing trip. It's an experience. It's something that helps you get back closer to the root of where we come from. When you take your shoes off and you step into a cold river that's running by and it's big giant timber all the way around you and the water is crystal clear, 
you understand why people get in the outdoors. Was my first hookup of the day. Man, it was a beautiful trout. First one to get on all day, and that's that's the one you, you flew all the way in here for, and I get him to the reel. And man, he's a good fish. Yeah. That was probably the biggest fish I've ever seen in the Selway River, and that's kind of how it works. Those ones yeah, get away. But it wasn't long in this virgin water, and I had another hookup. These trout are just so aggressive up here, and you're dry flying. It makes even an amateur like me look great. Pretty good fish. Yeah, your cut bow. We got on the pretty nice little cutthroat up here at Richie Outfitters, fishing the Selway. Pretty fish. I'm gonna catch and release. Another nice one. There he is, buddy. That's a good fish. Yeah, if you feel more comfortable, I did, because if not, you get a mess. Make sure you keep him in the water. It's a good fish. Oh, you okay? <laughs> bring your, bring your tip toward the shore out to her. You all right? I didn't get it on film, don't worry. That's a good fish. Is it? Ooh, that's a pretty one. That nice cut throat. Look at that baby. That is Idaho Ed's finest. Beautiful trout. It's a miracle I haven't had a broken ankle yet. I need the felt sole. <laughs> the old keen rubber soles are tough on the old moss line rocks. <laughs> Just broke my hip going for the trout today. Excited. You got him landed. Mm, did. How much fun did you have? I had a blast. Don't have a picture to show it. Hands covering up the whole fish. But <laughs> We're trying to keep him healthy. <laughs> and he barely got out alive, too. It started off good. It was nice and cool this morning. We caught a lot of trout. Kind of warmed up this afternoon. We just kind of laid up in the shade. So It was a nice afternoon, though. Pretty. Beautiful out here. Yeah. God's country. God's country. Well, we came back and found Phil in his boxers, and he was all laid up. But he kind of he kind of left on us. Jay was slacking behind, but he showed up later. Where did he go? Rest little bear or something. He took care of him though. When you get to something so beautiful like this and everything's so pure, the purest form of fishing is fly fishing. You know, I don't have anything against just regular spin cast fishing, but the art of being a fly fisherman just ties it all together. It's such a practiced art that you just work at it and it's great. You don't have a tackle box in tow and all this other stuff. You've got three pieces of a fly rod that work together, some fly line, and you've got a box that big full of everything you need. It's just a great way to go catch fish in the mountains. A lot of times it's just getting your fly in the right spot where dry flying and what a dry fly is it just stays on top of the water and so you have to really watch. It's like hunting those fish that dry fly is floating by and you're watching for a fish to come hit it because you got to set the hook at the right time to make it all successful but it's just the water is so clear that when they start up to it it's awesome.
Move the head on this one. You bet. <laughs> what time is it? Like three in the morning? Just about. At noon. Start of the show before he puts his makeup on. You bet. Slept good. <laughs> good dinner. I don't know. These diehards eat up early around here. Act very enthused this bunch. <laughs> uh, you'd have these guys train. Yeah. He's a big trout. We got to get going early and sneak up on him. Sneak up on him? Yeah. About lunch? Yeah. About lunch still worked pretty good yesterday. Yeah. Mm. All right. Let's see, what is it? El Catus. Big trout. How about me and your brother kind of put the clinic on on the big fish yesterday? Yeah. You might catch it a few, but we went for quantity, quality. How's it go? <laughs> <laughs> quality, not quantity. There you go. I always like quantity, though. Next morning, Mike wants to show us downriver. And I knew it was gonna be a little hairy. I've heard about this side of the river. But we got horseback, and I'm trying to be pretty cool, but we're riding over some ledges that drop 1,000 feet down, and we're on horses, and all you can hear is feet coming across the gravel. And it'll make, you know, it'll make you wanna hang on a little bit, but I look up and I see Bart and Blake, they're leaned up the hill with one foot out of the stirrup. You know, you watch all these old movies about these people that discover paradise, and we found it. We've seen these deep holes where they're gonna be full of trout, and it's just crystal clear water. I did. I got that one good. There you go. All right. That's a good bit. Yeah. Fly fishing the river up here is more like hunting than fishing. You know, it's all about reading the river, you know, looking for the slow spots and looking where the fish would be hanging out. You use the current to make your fly do what it needs to do and you throw across the current and you let it come around and usually in that swirl right there is when they like to hit it. But you have to know where to let it drift to to get those fish to hit it. And so the whole time it's just about trying to be smarter than the river or work with the river, not even be smarter than the river. It's about how to work the water. You know, it's where to put your fly so it'll float into this hole right here and you'll catch Got a fish. It. So the whole time, it's just, it's not just casting across there and reeling in and catching a fish. It's learning how to finesse your fly, get it to sit in the current correctly, and let it drift into where the fish are. Oh, I got that. Yeah. Nice fish. Well, it's not even just about catching the fish, it's just about taking your fly rod. It's all catch and release. We crimp the barbs on the hooks. It's just about being in the mountains with some great friends and enjoying, you know, what's still out there.
here I've got the Johnson boys. I've got number six, their star receiver on a nationally ranked team, and his little brother that's 17, and they're about to jump off a 40-foot cliff, and I know if something goes bad, somebody's gonna kill me. Dude, no, uh-uh. It's not bad. Look at the shell. You can look down and almost look over the top of it. There's a... Feet first. Don't get too close to the edge, because you'll slip. Jeez. How was it? Yeah, that'll work. Well, with a little advice from my friend Mike, I tried the hopper. It wasn't very long. Bob and I were hooking up again, and I hooked one of the prettiest fish I caught all week. These fish are so gorgeous. Cut bows, rainbows, in fresh, clean, cold water. It doesn't get much better than this. It's a nice fish. It's a beautiful fish. And the best part, He'll be here next time you come fishing. Gonna hike out today and catch some rainbow, and some cut bow, or some cutthroat, dolly varden, whatever lies within the holes. You have the camera and the pole when he goes to catching fish. Well, at the end of the week, you start to run out of flies. When you hook up to a log under the water, it's time to go in after it. One thing you don't want to do is run out of flies when you're in this kind of country. We're on another fork of the river where we're allowed to keep some fish, so we're gonna have fresh fish for dinner. Beauty. Well, you never give a guy a hard time about this happening because it's not very long and I've got hooked on a rock in the middle of the river. This water's cold and it's deep and it's pushing me around. Hey, hey, still got it. Got it. Get it hooked out. Now the trick is to make it out of the river. <laughs> You're getting a little dirty anyway. So to top it off, we're swimming in crystal clear water. We're enjoying fresh fish at the campfire that night and just the camaraderie of going in the back country and catching these native trout out of the river. It's what ties us together to our heritage, to Lewis and Clark when they were trying to survive this wilderness or the Indian people that lived here. They lived the way we did that week. Although we had a plane picking us up, we were living in their footsteps and that's what this is about. I got a camera in my freaking pack, I want to get wet. It's deep right there, too. <laughs> Damn <laughs> shit. Slippery is rocked on the man. Jumped right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Collar Ventures, here we go again, sell away. Uh, come up here with the Richie Outfitters again. Good friends, kind of like coming to see family. 
hunted deer, hunted bear, and now we've got the cut bow down. And it's been an awesome trip. Got to hunt with some good friends and experience this wilderness. It's always hard to leave. Best outer, what is it? <laughs> Best outfitter in Idaho, Richie Outfitter. Need to get up here. What are you holding yourself like that for? A slimy trout. That's a nice fish. Can you take a picture of it? 